Hello, everybody. It's Vicki Lee coming to you today to talk about a subject that is oh so prevalent right now in the region where we live. We're going to talk about fear. Fear is a big one, isn't it? I have heard it said that that fear is mentioned 365 times in the Bible, one reference for every day of the year. That's for a reason, don't you think? But this is what it says. 2 Timothy 1, 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. You know, I love that scripture. Let's read it again. 2 Timothy 1, 7. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Fear is a big one. Um, for those of you who have never heard me speak before, I, my family came to the Lee County area in Florida, Southwest Florida, 100 years ago. They arrived in the 1920s from Georgia and they settled in when there were no amenities. <laughs> there was no garbage pickup. There was no, um, the spraying for mosquitoes like they do today, no mosquito control organizations. And so they came here and they were farmers and they were agricultural. And so they came to the wilds of Florida in Southwest Florida. And through the years, we have seen some storms come and storms go. My mother was pregnant with my sister when Hurricane Donna came through. My mother stood on the back porch of an old Southern home and watch the eye go through. And my mother, if she had been just been a little farther along, she would have had to have gone to the hospital with the barometric pressure dropping, but she wasn't far enough along. And so we've seen these things come and go. My daughter was in Punta Gorda when Hurricane Charlie came through. And that was a surprise for all of us. It took a surprise turn. She was in the house and she had no storm shutters. They were taken by surprise and went through the storm without a scratch. You know, God is good. He's good. And then she went through the storm the other day, almost to category five, Hurricane Ian, just a few days ago, with no storm shutters and not a scratch. Nothing came through, no water. She was fine. So it's praises. It's praises to the Lord. You know, I'm so thankful we were able to be in touch with both my daughter and my niece through a group text with the, the family. And we had cell phone service through the whole storm. I live further outside of Fort Myers right now, more inland and more um, a little bit east. And so we got some wind, but I didn't lose electricity or anything not very much rain, but I'm going through all of these details about this hurricane because fear is a big one, isn't it? And when you have a category four, almost five storm that has formed and they said it's going up to Tampa and then it doesn't go up to Tampa, suddenly the trajectory changes and you're in the path of this mammoth bomb bomb, natural bomb that went off in our area. And there's just devastation everywhere. So I've been centering myself and not really speaking because that's a lot to absorb. That's a lot to take in. And then I said, no, let's turn this on. Let's speak, go back and get into normalcy. Everything has changed. The worst case scenario happened and here we are. And so we talk about fear because that's something that'll make you shake in your boots. What just happened? But he says, I have not given you a spirit of fear. There are times when we get afraid. Fear comes, but we're not supposed to nurse that fear because if you do if you keep nursing that and nursing that 
then a spirit of fear will come into it. I heard the other day, wherever your weakness is, the darkness will come. Think about that. Wherever your weakness is, the Bible talks about those besetting sins, those sins that were so easy to get into. Fear could be one of those, couldn't it? It could very easily be one of those. But what does it say about this? He's not given us a spirit of fear, but a power and of love and of a sound mind. So if you can let go of the wheel, do your best, let God do the rest. We had to physically prepare for this storm. We had to stock up on supplies. We had to do our best. And then once we had done our best, we had to let go and let God do the rest. Even when we were on text, the group text with my niece and my daughter, there was no getting to them. There was no stopping the events. So he said, even as you're talking to them, you have to be centered in the Lord and trusting him through the circumstances. Even if the circumstance was dire and your worst case scenario, I looked this afternoon, the death toll from Ian stands at 56 right now. Unfortunately, it's going to rise well beyond that with the severity of this storm and the people who were caught in the rising waters. But we have to center ourselves and not give in to fear and fear and fear. And then the spirit of fear is upon us. Now, fear is a reaction that we have, isn't it? The spirit of fear goes into the spiritual realm. So now we have invited a spirit of fear over our lives. And we don't want that because he said, I've not given you that, but I've given you power and love and a sound mind. I talk all the time about the changes that we have going on in the world, in society. This storm was a massive change for the coastline. I work in a resort, a beautiful resort where people all, all over the world come to it and it's right off the beach. We had storm surge in that area. I have not heard anything. I'm not going to work this weekend because they are obviously dealing with what's happening. My financials are wrapped around this. I have financial responsibilities, yet for the last few days, I have been resting in the Lord because it's not by power and it's not by might, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord. And if there's anything that I could do to encourage you and to advise you, when you feel yourself going there, take the time to settle down until you're recentered in the Lord. Because when you'll center in him, he will override those human responses. Let me repeat that. God will override those natural human responses. He will take your fear and he will give you power and love and a sound mind, a sound mind. Don't we want power and love and a sound mind today? I had talked the other day about people who were, I'm noticing every age group and they're getting sequestered and they're kind of alone and they're ruminating in their own thoughts. And I have talked about how it's a form of narcissism if it goes too far because we're ruminating about ourselves. We don't have enough out there and we're doing this 
because we're probably trying to deal with a lot of things in our life. And at the bottom of that, it's probably fear-based. I have heard it said that in life, it's either love or fear-based. So the Bible is telling you, don't fear, don't fear. And I talk about God's beautiful exchange policy. You give him ashes, he'll give you beauty. You give you mourning, he'll give you praise. And now if you give him your fear, he will give you power and love and a sound mind. How many people are on antidepressants today? How many Christians are dependent on antidepressants today? And God's going, you know what? If you give me that, let me take that. I'll take it. Cast your cares. Cast your cares on him for he cares for you. That's why they want you to come to Christ. Do you see what I'm saying? I have said nothing about religion, have I? This is all practical stuff, loving stuff. The God who made the universe says, I'm kind hearted and I'm humble. Come to me. The God of the universe <laughs> says he's kind hearted and humble. Come to me, he says. The arms are open wide and you don't have to live in fear. You don't have to live in fear. Come to the Lord, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. God instituted the Garden of Eden in the very beginning with Adam and Eve to be a perfect environment. But man fell because man makes his choices. You make your choices. I make my choices. We all make our choices and we choose wrong eventually somewhere along the way because we're fallen. But Christ came and paid the price so that through him, the perfect sacrifice, we can be made righteousness. And then we can enter into his family and we can have this blessed exchange policy that's too beautiful for words. Give him your fear. Don't you want power and love? See, power of its own, power can corrupt. But when you put love with it, it's an unbeatable duo. And when you take power and love, because you gave him your fear, you pushed it away, then you are given a sound mind. Look around the world. Look at the headlines. Don't we need sound minds? in this world, it can be found from the foot of the cross. True Jesus Christ, go to the God, God the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Cast your cares, but your cares are usually fear-based, and we don't have to live that way. I hope this helps. It's Vicki Lee. If you like my work, please like share, and subscribe. Have a great day, everybody.